Jesus. He loves us. Oh. Here, oh, keep going, guys.
Okay, I feel like you're supposed to lay your hands on his knees and just speak life into his knee. You can see he's got it bandaged up right now. Okay, and what is your name? It's Bill, right? Is it Bill? Brian, Brian, Brian come up here. I want you to stand right here. Mario, I want you to stand right here in front of my brother James. I want you guys to lay your hands on his abdomen area. I want you to believe God that his love for you is greater than what you understand and that God wants to use you to bring healing from heaven to earth through you two guys along with all of us into James right now in Jesus' name. We're just releasing healing right now. And we thank you, God, for touch. Uh, come over here and touch. Stand, please stand in agreement. Get over there, Shay. Come on. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, this is what our God wants to do. Amen. And we're united. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, he says, you're worthy. You're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. No more pain. No more fear. No more fear. I speak to fear right now. You will not rule. We lose faith right now in the name of Jesus, through the love of Jesus, through the love of God right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Frankie, come up here. Come on, right. Well, just come up here. Hallelujah. Give that to Brittany. I want you to go after Bruce. Get up in there. Get after James. I want you just to trust God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Man, that's just love pouring into you guys right now. That's just faith pouring into you guys right now. Don't, you don't even have to do anything. Don't try to think it through. Don't try to feel anything. Just let the Holy Spirit love on you through his people, through his word, through his truth right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Yay, God. Yay, God. Huh? Hallelujah. Tim and Bear, I want you to come up here. Tim and Bear, come on up. Just, I want you to come all the way around front, please. Hallelujah. These are guys that are always in the back and they need to come up and just lay hands on and pray and just pray in agreement, guys. Just touch them if you can get there and move up forward and just touch them and just release because you, you have faith, you have ministry, you have things in you from God and he wants to move through you right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Yay! Oh. So um, just keep going for just a minute, guys. I want to I wanna uh, read something as... So I was reading in Acts today, and uh, I was reading in Acts chapter 9, and it was where, you know, like Paul got knocked off from the donkey. He got knocked down, and... Um, his whole life changed. And God started doing a work in him shortly thereafter. But I, I want to let you know that he originally went to the disciples, but the disciples were afraid of him because of everything that he had done to the church. And, you know, and sometimes we're afraid that God just might not use us because maybe we made fun or mocked him. But in Jesus' name, any, any of that that has taken place, we take the power away from that right now in Jesus' name. But I want you to know that he healed, he healed, um, a disciple by the name of Tabitha. It says in that Joppa there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of the works and the charitable deeds which she did. But it happened in these days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in the upper room. And since Lydda was near Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him 
to not to, to delay, not to delay, and to come to them. Then Peter arose and went there, and when he had come, they brought him to the upper room. This is the upper room today, guys. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And all the all the widows stood by him weeping, showing their tunics and their garments that Dorca had made while she was with them. But Peter, <laughs> y'all, but Peter, <laughs> whew, but Tim, but Bear, <sighs> but Mario. Yes. Wow. But Sandy, but Mary, but God's people. Yes. Mm. What Peter did is he put everybody out and he knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. Mm -hmm. She opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows, he presented her alive. In Jesus' name, we're presenting you guys alive. Amen. Your body parts that have been giving you trouble, we call them to live and to be and to function the way that they're supposed to. We're presenting you to the people. We're presenting you to the community as healed and whole. And it became known throughout Joppa, throughout Manistee, <laughs> throughout Bear Lake, and throughout Ludington, and many believed the Lord. And it was that he stayed many days in Joppa. See, many believed because of what God did to them. You share your testimony because God hand is on your lives. Yeah. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. Woo. Let's high five somebody as we sit down. <laughs> Woo. This is a move. Woo. This is a move. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. Yes, we believe because we see. Yes, are still what you do. Yes. One more time, Brittany. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we Did anybody feel the presence of the Lord? Did anybody feel something happen to you as you were praying and being part of this prayer circle? Can you tell me about it? Let me give you a mic, though, so that we can. I just, you know, sometimes as we're praying for other people, Just uh, the spirit of the Lord rises up in you when you pray for someone else. And you're building up your own faith as you release faith. You're building up a pot and, it's, and it gets to a certain point And then it has to, be, it has to release. Mm -hmm. it, it has to. And it's, if you focus it on, you know, like when you called me out to pray for Bruce, that that holy fire in you 
builds builds and builds to a point and then at a point of contact then it's released yeah. and you can feel it go just like yeah. the electricity through a wire yeah. it just kind of like slow motion it just goes out and you and you can tell when it's gone or when to stop because you just feel the, the release or the pullback Amen. thank you anybody else You know, for me today, I walked in this church and I was bringing in a bag of junk with me to the point where for the first time ever, I think I actually walked out the door during pre-service because I didn't want to let go of my crap. <laughs> <laughs> but when we were up here worshiping and pastor called us up there to pray, I felt this, uh, this release that it's not me. I don't have to worry about it because it's already taken care of. I may be trying to carry it with me, but it's already done. And when I was up there, I just got the release of it being done. The second I let go of myself and I let God try to start working through me, it was gone and it was done and I didn't have to worry about it. God's really awesome. <laughs> he, um, he uses us to reach out to people that you don't really know why you're doing it. You just, you just reach out and touch them. And God moves. He just like flows through you to them. And you can't really get words for it, but there's a warmth sometimes. You can feel a heat. You, um, but you know God's moving because you usually got tears or happiness. <laughs> I get a lot of joy, so I, I like the joy part. <laughs> One of the things that I was thinking about as we were standing there together is a church body. And when it says when one part hurts, that we hurt with. So for James and for Bruce and the things that we're going, they're going through, we're hurting with them at that time. And then we have Dan, and it says, when one part of the body rejoices, we rejoice with. Mm -hmm. And so we had both of those things happen, and I don't think there's anything more powerful than when somebody's laying hands and you feel hands on top of you, and that's all going to that person by the power of the Spirit. And we give God all the praise, honor, and glory. Um, you do because otherwise it doesn't pick up. All right. So there you go. You wonder how much God loves us and stuff. I heard one time that uh, if the oceans were ink and the sky was parchment, it would not be big enough to tell of His love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Stand up. I'm like, are you telling? To go after no, somebody? I'm just pointing because I can't remember her name. Mary. Mary. Okay, yeah, hang on to both of those for me, please. Well, when Mary was talking about reaching out and touching somebody, she reached out and touched me. Mm-hmm. And what she doesn't know is what I felt. Yeah. Okay. Peace. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. It's okay. It's good. Mario. Yeah, I, don't, I really still can't talk yet. I'm still shaking and sweating and everything, man. But uh, I'm, just, I, I'm blessed. I know God's here. God's always been here. And um, it's just a, a place where the broken can come and and just let it go. Because I, I love real life. And I'm so blessed to have this place in my life. And I wish it was everywhere in the world. But I'm going to take this light and I'm going to let it shine, man, where I go. Amen. I just stand up. Stand up your heart. <laughs> I know when Mary laid her hands on me, I just felt comfort. And whenever I start to sing, it does something within me. Amen. 
it heals broken parts of me um, when I just release and let go. And I felt God moving through everybody. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody else on this side? Ms. Cheryl? Even though I was back here, I could feel the love of God all the way back here. Yes. And I felt a big weight, weight lifted off my own shoulders. Whatever it may have been, I thank God for it and all, all of you, the whole body and the praying and the strength. How you doing? Good. Are you doing good? You got a smile? <laughs> Your eyes are a little brighter? Yeah. Look at that. Can you see that? <laughs> All right, you, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Ruth, yay, 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 God. Here, you got to hold this one, too. Okay. Well, um, this is a wonderful church family that would pray for you. Yeah. And uh, I'm just so blessed. Amen. And uh, I feel 20 pounds lighter. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Peace of God. Amen. Ms. Mary, stand up, please, for me. Thank you. I'm not going to sing this because I am not a singer, but all I kept hearing was, bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Amen. 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 Bear, Tim, you good? Okay, here I come. All right, stand up. Before you said it, um, I felt like it was the upper room, but we're on the ascent. We're walking the steps to attain to the upper room, and this is just the first beginning of being in one accord. I was back here praying, and the Lord laid on my heart. He said, this is how you invite others to come to the river. And he gave me that song, come to the river, lay yourself down, and find your heart. And he said, and drink from the cup I pour. He's pouring out his cup in this place. And he says, invite others in, because you have the right to give them that cup. Amen. Anybody else? Frankie, you experienced anything? What was oh, happening to you? It was just what I seen when just I was... Just a minute, uh, let me get you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what I seen, you know, when we were talking about everybody's in one accord, you know, when I was videotaping, and I looked back, and you see the youth extending their hands out in, 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 uh, in agreement, you know, just so it's on camera, too, so when you go back and see it, you see all the youth over here, hands extended out, and Amen. just praying also. Amen. Thank you. I just, for me, was so completely um, struck by, man, this is, this is family in the true sense of what God has intended it to be. I mean, standing there in that circle, there were, I mean, just so many people swarming, everybody willing and, like, wanting to, to lay hands on people so that they can be healed. Uh, that desire in our hearts for each other is amazing. And yeah. that's what I was feeling. And it was just like, it was so overwhelming. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was just beautiful. Yay. Anybody else? OK. So anybody else? One more time. Come on, stand up. Spread. I just, I just felt a lot of tingling. I'm still tingling, my hands especially. So I don't even feel like talking right now. Uh -huh. I'm just feeling it. But it, it was just wonderful love. Awesome. Just love. Amen. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so this is what I saw. I saw everybody up there. And it was like the Holy Spirit was in the center and then a little circles and big circles. And back here where the children were was a wall of faith. 
childlike faith, surrendering, and all their hands were up, and they were just taking part where they were comfortable yes. taking part. But that's what I saw, and that's what I felt was that huge like protection of childlike faith around all of that up there. Yeah. Woo. And that's what we need, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to make me talk. Okay, yeah. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, I didn't even want to come up there, but you made me come up there because I, I, well, I wanted to because I care about James. Um, I'm an addict in recovery. I actually been struggling this whole week because I feel like I've been uh, dealing with doubting in my faith. Um, I felt lost when I came in here, but I really wanted to heal James, and I feel like without the power of God working through me, there was no way I could do that. So I didn't even talk. I just closed my eyes, and I started feeling something happening. So it's, it's coming back to me. Amen. <laughs> How you doing, James? Can I? Oh, great. <laughs> How you doing? Amen. Uh-huh. I just need to step out on something that I felt like needed to happen. So can I get Mario and James to I just? Mario and James? Yeah, up here. Yes. Okay. Can you guys come up here for a minute? Just for, this will be quick, I promise. I felt this I felt this when we were praying and I didn't say it because I don't know why I didn't say it because I didn't have the nerve to. But James maybe stand right here. Face to cross. Mario, come up here with me. So I, I heard. Just... You're telling me back here about your bowel obstruction, your partial bowel obstruction. That we're supposed to yell and break that obstruction. And Mario, I know that you're going to yell with me because I know that the God, God told me <laughs> that Mario and me were supposed to lay our hands on your stomach and all three of us were going to yell. Mario and I are going to let the cross come to you while you are yelling that all obstruction gone. So what this is, it's and I was said it over there, it's a prophetic act. Um, God really did the work in the center of the circle. He's already done it. And now what you're going to do is you're just going to finish it by faith. So this is a point of contact. It's like, yelling that wall down we've done that before in the past that wall that and then when you that wall falls on the other side is the goods so we I just put my anger in the basket yeah. <laughs> 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 not only you to yell just ah and so what it is it's just a point of of it's a prophetic act is what it is so you don't got to do it alone because we're all going to do it with you on three right except me because i'll really be loud one Two, three. Ah! Ah! Woo! Woo! Amen. <laughs> now it is finished, right? Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to let the cannons loose in the house, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, you guys, I really want to um, just kind of explain to you what just happened a little bit um, by the Holy Spirit. So, um... I read Acts because he said to read Acts, but I want you to understand that um, in Acts in chapter 9, I told you it starts talking about um, Paul and uh, Saul. Saul actually, you know, we know that he persecuted the church and Saul was out to, to persecute Christians. And But what God did is he struck the man down, um, knocked him off his donkey, and this is what he said. I have a plan for this man. That's what God said. He's for my purpose. Now, even with his whole past, his persecution, he stood there as, as Stephen was being stoned. God still had a plan for his life. But see, it wasn't for the glory of Paul. It was for the glory of the Lord. Amen. So what took place today in this church as we unified and prayed Oh, how he loves me over each other and over these guys. You know, oh, how he loves you. And we just allowed the, the presence of the Lord to build and our faith to build and the unity to build because we were all in one accord singing the same thing. It's for the glory of God. Because that part that I read in here, it said that many believed and many came. And I was looking at that today and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. Because, see, not only was Tabitha rose from the dead, Dorcas, you know, um, but this, this 
Ananus was healed prior to, prior to her. And so that's in chapter 32 of Acts 9, and I'm going to read it. Now it came to pass as Peter went through all the parts of the country that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydda. So there he found a certain man, name, name, and I'm going to mangle these words because they just don't, I don't know these, these kinds of things, but it's, I'm <laughs> saying it's Ananus. Ananus. Something like that. Ananias. It's not Ananias. It's something else. It's 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 a it's a it starts with a. And so <laughs> he had been he had been bedridden for eight years and he was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, A, he said, Jesus, Jesus the Christ heals you. Jesus the Christ heals you. Amen. Jesus the Christ heals you. Heals you. Hmm. Arise and make your bed. Then he arose immediately, so all who dwelt in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. All. Two different towns, Lydda and Sharon, saw what God did. Jesus, the Christ, healed this guy, this A guy. And uh, because of that healing, everybody else was drawn to the Lord and brought into the kingdom of heaven, who came into relationship with him. This is the thing. This is what we as a body of Christ are called to do. But it's not for the glory of the church. Oh, it's River of Life, or oh, it's the Tab, or it's Bethel. No, it's Jesus Christ. It's the Lord that does the healing. Be healed. So what we did tonight is we prayed, we sang, we worshiped, and we received and allowed heaven to touch earth because oh, how he loves us. Amen. And oh, how he loves you. Right? And oh, how he loves you. So the thing is, is that as, as spring was touching this person and she's singing, oh, how he loves you. <laughs> Dave, oh, how he loves you. This is why I wanted to know what other people were experiencing because, see, when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to touch many. Amen. These were his focus points, James and Bruce. They came up. The point of contact of faith, we all stretched out. You, you came in feeling like, man, you're losing your faith, and God through the needs of others, you just stepped in and your point of contact was James. It activated your faith, but it's for the kingdom of heaven. And so when God does this, just if read Acts, church, it's so good. And I'm sitting here this morning and I'm looking at it and I'm it actually was after it later morning toward the afternoon. But I was like, wow, this is so good. This is, just proves why you have us doing this Saturday night or Saturday day or midday, whatever time it is that we're going to be doing the next four months, September, October, November, and December. It shows right here. It just, it just comes alongside of what God's been and saying by his spirit, by the word now and saying, this is exactly what I want my church to do because I am going to touch many because of the healings that are going to take place. I was standing behind Mario and as they were singing, God said, put your hand on his heart because I'm going to heal his heart right now. And he says, and not only am I going to heal his heart, but I'm going to heal his mind right now. And so I did that as we continued to sing and I just spoke it. Sandy, I'm standing back there. Had her move back so the guys could get forward. And God says, you speak no pain to those knees and that hip because that's not of me. And so speak that. So all this stuff was going on. But it's all for the community, for your families, for the people that might think that maybe they're losing their faith. We're not losing our faith. We just have to grow and understand what God's doing in our lives. Amen. We've got to stay connected, and that's what he wants us to do. And so this morning, I just really felt like the Lord was saying, listen, all these healings that have been going on for decades have always been for my glory, but people are missing the boat because we all of a sudden want to be like Simon the sorcerer 
in the chapter before. God, we want to go and heal your people. We, we want to do these things, but without realizing that maybe the motive of our heart is to bring glory to us or the church that we go to or something other than just Jesus Christ. You understand? And it's okay for people to say thank you. It's okay for people to say, wow, you, you changed my life. We know that it was God. God used you to change my life. This is like Mario said, you know, this, this changed his life. Like Tef said on the phone to me the other day, you don't understand. This is where I met the Lord again. This is where I needed to be. You know, and it isn't the church, but the presence of the Lord likes to hang out with us. Amen? Amen. Yay, God. I want him to hang out with us. Thank you, Jesus. And so this is what we need to understand. And I'm closing with this. I really want to talk about Simon the Sorcerer for just a minute. See, Simon the Sorcerer, he, he was an enchanter. He was one that could do magic. And he was using his gifts and he was impressing the people. And the people thought he was amazing and that he, was, he had all this God power. That's where your, your fortune tellers come from and things like that. It's, it's the counterfeit. Yes, yes they're gifted because we're born with our gifts. But if you don't use them in the right way, you're not using them for heaven and for his glory. You're using them for the other side. Well, Simon the sorcerer got saved. I love this. This is one of the first, first revelations I got out of the Word of God, like and when I was 43 coming to the Lord, and I started going to Bible school for a very short period of time. But I had to preach on something, and this is the revelation God gave me. And, and the thing was is that Simon the sorcerer didn't know any better. He just, he just knew that he got saved and he became a follower but when he seen the apostles come and lay hands on the people who had received Christ and were baptized in water, but they had not yet had the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, come upon them. When Simon the sorcerer witnessed that, he realized that's the true power. But because of his ignorance and where he was at in his life, he asked, if he could buy it. Can I buy that? I want to do that. But see, he didn't understand that the motive of wanting to, to be able to baptize people in the Holy Spirit and go around and heal people in the name of Jesus, he would have used it for his own gain. He wasn't at a place to really understand yet. So he got rebuked big time and told that, hey, you can't do that. You better go pray and repent because this is bad. And so he said, will you pray for me? There's a lot of Christians and a lot of people that don't know and understand. God is the only one. Not the counselor, not the pastor, not the person that exercised deliverance. Only God. And it's for his purpose so that others can come into the freedom and relationship of Jesus Christ. That they can actually understand. So search your heart always when you're going to minister or you have a word or you think you have something. And in this church, we exercise a principle that I believe is biblical. We don't give words to each other without another person standing there. When they sent out disciples, Jesus, he sent twos. There's a big reason for that. It protects the person getting the word. It protects the person giving the word. And it protects the church. But words need to be spoken. Encouragement needs to come. You guys and I needed this tonight. I needed, I needed to see a move of the Lord tonight. Not for me, but I'm taking it home with me. I need to see Him in so many different aspects of who He is, but the biggest thing I need is not to take His glory. To take what he gives me during that time, but not to take his glory. Amen? Amen. Yeah. James, how you doing back there? <laughs> how you doing over there, Bruce? Big old smile on your face. How you doing back there, Dan? <laughs> Many people came to the Lord because of these miraculous healings. 
And that's what's going to happen. When God said to me about the church, He said, where are all my babies? Where are all my children? There's believers out there living in the world because they couldn't live up to law. God's going to bring them back. But also, He's going to bring the unbelievers in. And you guys and I are going to witness signs, miracles, and wonders. We'll be used too. But we're going to be witnesses. Amen. And then we're going to share the testimonies. It's okay to share somebody else's testimony. Do it. Because it builds the faith of people. Amen? Amen. So, with that, I'm closing. Let's pray. Father, I just really thank you for opportunity to just be used by your Spirit today. Just to call forth what you wanted to happen. Thank you for the obedience of those that were called forth and just pressed in even harder. Thank you for those that were standing in agreement and putting their hands out and interceding and praying. We need every part of the body. Thank you for the healing that took place today, the change that you heard the testimony of already. Not only did you touch Bruce, not only did you touch James, but you touched every one of us in the way that we needed to be touched tonight. So God, I thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's close with awesome God. Yes. Um,